people's attitudes on St. Helena towards the environment are changing. Since the government invested in wind turbines and solar panels to help contribute towards our electricity generation, it's helped to open up people's minds in terms of what is available. So there's only very few electric vehicles on the island at the moment. So we are excited to be in partnership with Subaru and a charging company that has installed an electric charger in the remotest place in the world. So usually projects like these, you have big technical teams behind you, but actually we're sending this vehicle as it is. We're so confident in its reliability. This could be a real mic test bed for us because the electricians are so far away, the charger is so far away. It allows us to stress test a lot of our systems, be that the data connection to the charger to see if we can fix something so remote. For a lot of people who haven't necessarily owned an electric vehicle before, this will help to, I think, convince them that there is space here to replace their diesel and petrol reliant vehicles. We are hugely reliant at, the, at this current state on important diesel. We spend about five million pounds a year bringing diesel in. We're looking to transition to more renewable energy production. I would love to see a day when St. Helena is zero emissions. If the, the message for St. Helena, for tourists and for locals is that we become the place where we have the most remote rechargeable hub, I think it just sends a message to all different stakeholders. We already have saw place uh, charges in quite interesting places, far reaches of northern Norway as well as multi-million pound apartments in London. So we believe that location shouldn't be an issue for where charges are. So to be able to supply charges into San Diego, which is so remote, is, is a really interesting and exciting opportunity for us. We're really excited to be invited to be part of this project. It's a real testament to the Subaru's reliability and capability that we've been invited. And to be honest, if you can operate an electric vehicle in this type of environment, then you really can anywhere. I think our generation is already making waves and helping to change that mindset from fossil fuel related and reliant living. I think that even here, we can see a shift in people's attitudes. I am looking to bring electrical vehicles to the island in the first quarter of 2025 to trial to see if there is going to be the demand. People are very open and enthusiastic to have, have electric vehicles. If you were to revisit the island in five years time, the number of electric cars you'll find on island, I am confident will be three figures. We want to incentivize people bringing in more electric vehicles. So installing electric chargers, putting in the infrastructure, and then we can work on policies to try and um, increase the uh, electric vehicle fleet on the island. We are able to keep pace with what is happening in the rest of the world, and we can see how we all need to be more sustainable if we, if we want to have a future for our children. I think it's very possible that we can become completely green. We could only have diesel generation in terms of a resilience in case something goes wrong with the renewables. But it's entirely possible that we can run entire island from renewable energy.